Hi, welcome all of you in this uh, digital uh, signal passing hardware uh, demonstration uh, lab. We are here in, uh, taking a, a video uh, videography of uh, several experiments for you. And uh, I I am here uh, on Innovasu, the faculty uh, for DSP related uh, topics, uh, along with my colleague who is also uh, very much proficient in DSP in uh, different subjects, uh, Mr. Suryav Mondal and uh, Mustafa Kaji, our lab assistant, will be helping us in conducting the experiments. So, over to Suryav Mondal, uh, Suryav uh, Suryav, uh, Suryav for, uh, for his uh, ingenious uh, comments. Okay, so here in this particular lab, basically we have a small setup, <coughs> as you can see, uh, please come forward. So here we can see there's a DSP board, right? This is a digital signal processing board, right? Here we can see the IC number is TMS320C6713, that is a Texas Instrument DSP processor. And uh, in this particular board, uh, this particular port is basically powered in, DC power in to power up the board. And this is the port which is connected to our computer through USB connectors. And as you can see, the USB connector is connected to the USB port in the computers, as you can see down, right? And this through this port, we can program this particular board. And next is uh, basically important, there are two input port, two output port. First is basically mic in through which we can connect a microphone to take the data uh, to the board which will be just microphone data and second one is uh, uh, any real practical signal analog data we can uh, provide through this particular port this is called line in third port is basically the line out that means analog signal we can take out from this board and the fourth one is basically the headphone connector so if we are doing any kind of audio application the audio signals can be uh, provided through the microphone directly microphone audio data can be uh, read by the DSP processor after processing they can produce back to the headphone so that we can listen it okay so uh, in this particular first experiment uh, we will be demonstrating that how simply uh, by using C programming we can generate a C uh, a sinusoidal waveform and we will again see that how easily we can control the output sinusoidal frequency so that is the main object of the experiment so to do that we are connected to one uh, CRO port through this line output and there are two Two, uh, in, uh, two terminal one is a ground another is a one channel output and that is being displayed on the CR so this is our digital signal uh, uh, digital storage oscilloscope and now what to do basically we will power on this particular board <coughs> and uh, is this coupling is this okay just turn it on right coupling must be AC because we would like to see the sinusoidal right so now this is the board is getting ready as you can see the board is getting ready and it is putting the sinusoidal waveform right so now <clears throat> so this is here is a code now the code is basically generating one kilohertz sinusoidal signal so first we will build that then the debug so debugging means the program is loaded to the board now this is done so now we will start from here right so now just uh, go to the CRO right we can see the a pure sinusoidal tone signal is being generated and its frequency is around to be 1 kilohertz as it is being designed through the programming okay so now again we would like to change this particular frequency what simply we can do just come onto the screen so stopping this debug mode now we are changing the sampling frequency to 48 kilohertz Earlier it was 4 kilohertz, now it is in 48 kilohertz, so sampling frequency is changed to 6 times, so the generated signal frequency will change to 6 times as well, right? So let me build first, now debug, programming is loaded, it is ready to run, now it is running. So now just look at the CRO port, CRO screen, it is showing that the signal is generated and its frequency is fantastically switched to 6 kilohertz, right? So it guarantees. So how simply we are generating one frequency to another frequency sinusoidal waveform. So this is a simple technique to show you how to generate sine wave. Similarly, if we combine multiple sinusoidal waveform, we can generate a very complex kind of signals, okay? So just by programming in C. So that's it for the experiment. And um, uh, this is the hardware setup corresponding to that. 
and if we want to stop the debugging mode from here we just have to click this uh, terminal and now it is coming to the normal mode and now you can just change your C programming what is written over here and accordingly we will produce the output signal okay